Welcome to Kids of Cooking, where kids come first and cooking is fun. I'm Karen, and today Zach is here to help me in the kitchen. Zach was here once before. What did you make last time you were here, Zach? Do you remember? Uh, fruit dip and cinnamon chips. And you liked it so much, you went home and made it again, right? Yep. How was it a hit? Yeah. Who'd you make it for? Some friends? Uh, some of my parents' friends. Did they just gobble it up, and were they amazed at your culinary talents? Yeah. Yeah, you're kind of got you had a reputation as a chef now, don't you? Mm -hmm. You like that reputation too, don't you? Well, today we have a great recipe to make. We're making stuffed peppers in a slow cooker. We like these slow cooker recipes because they're just so easy. Do them in the morning, come home and eat. It's really nice. We've already washed our hands. Be sure you do that before you get started. You know, stuffed peppers are a favorite summer dish and this is an easy way, way to prepare them in the slow cooker. To start with, we're going to spray this just lightly with a cooking spray. I'm gonna let you do that, okay, Zach? So step over here, that lid's already loose. Maybe I don't need to lift that. You want to just lightly coat it, just go around, not too thick. Perfect. That just helps clean up later for the most part. You like to do dishes? Yeah. You do? All right. Would you, can I adopt you? No. Oh, okay. All right. Then we need to prepare our peppers. And now we've already washed two of these peppers. We've washed this one also, but it hasn't been cut yet. So I'm going to let you use this knife. You're comfortable with this, aren't you? Yeah. How old are you? Eleven. So you're old enough to handle a knife, aren't you? I just want you to cut the top off similar to how that is, all right? Do you know what's inside a pepper? Have you ever looked in there? Well, this no. will be a surprise, won't it? Okay, take the knife and just cut just the top part off. So you save most of the pepper. You don't want to go too deep. And what is in there? Anything good? Seeds. So do you want to eat that, you think? Not that. No, so we're going to pull that out. If you just reach in, you can pull that whole middle section out. And you might tear off some of that membrane, yeah, because you do not want that in your recipe. But now there's a lot of seeds in there. What do you think we should do with those? Wash them out. We're going to rinse them out. So let's go over to the sink. You just want to rinse all the seeds out. Did you get it? Yep. Looks good. You want to dry your hands? We'll take this back over. We're just going to set those aside for just a minute while we make our filling, okay? I'm going to pour that water. There's a little bit in there. Okay, now you can do this the night before if you want, and that would make assembly in the morning even faster. So you could go ahead and prepare your peppers the night before, and then that morning you don't have to worry about that. Next, we're going to take a one um, 14 and a half ounce can of diced tomatoes. Now, these tomatoes also have oregano, basil, and garlic in them, so there's some seasoning in there already. We're going to drain the juice off of that, and we can just use this strainer over a bowl, or you could use it over the sink, whatever's handiest for you. But that's probably the simplest way. We'll get rid of that. While those are draining, we're going to put our hamburger in here. This is one pound of lean ground beef. You wanna go ahead and add that to the bowl. Just dump it in there. And then to that, we're going to add our tomatoes. You can pour those in. Yeah, let them drain a little, there you go. It's all right. All right, now to that we need to add one half cup of long grain white rice, and this is uncooked. Our bag is right here, Zach, and the measuring cup is right there. That's one half cup measure, so just dip it in so it's full, but not over full. There you go, so you don't want to spill them everywhere. And add that to that mixture. And then we need a little more flavoring. We're going to add one half teaspoon of salt. It's already measured here, Zach. And one fourth teaspoon of just ground black pepper. And there's your measure. Perfect. This goes together really fast, doesn't it? Uh -huh. Now you need to combine all those ingredients. Now if you want to, you can also do this spilling the night before too. And that would make it um, real quick to put together. You just want to be sure you cover it and refrigerate it so that it stays fresh for in the morning. Now you can use the spoon if you want and mix all this together. You want to try that? You just want to mix all those ingredients together. And you have to break up that hamburger. Yeah, like that. If you want, your hands are clean, and I think hands come in pretty handy in the kitchen. So if you want to, you can just reach in with your hands and mix it too, but some people don't like getting gooey. It's up to you. That's the fun part. You like that, okay. It feels kind of good, doesn't it? Of course, you'll want to be sure you wash your hands after this because you've touched raw meat, so you're gonna have to go wash well again, all right? That looks really good. I think you did a good job. If you want to go wash your hands, I'll get you a paper towel. I'll give you some soap. There you go. You want a paper towel? Mm -hmm. 
There you go. Dry off and we'll go back and finish. So I made you do the messy part, so that yeah. worked out really well. All right, now we're going to put our filling in our peppers. So you just want to use the spoon. Let me move this in here. Just go ahead and take a spoonful and you just want to pat it down in there. You don't have to pack it real tight, but you want it to be pretty full. Just like that. Once they're done, we can put them in the slow cooker. So you go ahead and do those two. Looks like we might have some extra. We'll see how much meat we have left over. And you can just make some meatballs out of the extra meat. Nice and fresh. Okay. Now, let's make some meatballs. This is, this is going to be kind of a challenge to fit these in here. These are big peppers, but we'll, we'll get them. There we go. Now, we have some extra meat here, so you want to help me make some meatballs? We can just scoop up a little like this. And we'll just put those in on top so that can cook, too. You can't have too much, uh, too much meat. There's always someone who'd leave the extra. And you know what we're going to have to do again after this? What? What do you think? After we touch all this raw hamburger meat. Wash our hands. Again. It never ends, does it? Nope. But it's very important. you get it all? That's good. Okay, let's go back. Wash our hands again. I'm going to reach up here and get some soap. All right. There you go. Thank you. We are about as clean as you can get after all that, don't you think? Okay. Next, you're just going to use a 46-ounce can of tomato juice. And this crock pot is not real big. The slow cooker is not real big. So you aren't, you aren't going to need a lot of this. You just want to pour enough tomato juice in here around the peppers until they're nearly covered. So it depends on how big your slow cooker is, how much juice you might use. So you can go ahead and pour that over just slow so it doesn't splatter until they're just about covered. So you want to pour it to the top. And then if you have any leftover juice, you can just store it in a plastic container, but be sure you use it within a few days. Keep it in the refrigerator. That's good. Now put the lid on. Now you just cover and cook on low setting about 10 to 12 hours, so you've got plenty of time to go do everything else you want to do. You can go ride your bike, you can go play a baseball game, you can do whatever you want to do. Come back and it'll be done. Be sure that you remove the lid during the last hour of cooking and turn the temperature to high, and this will allow some of the liquid in the tomato juice to evaporate and make a thicker sauce. Now before serving, be sure you check the temperature of the beef mixture to be sure it is done. Ground beef should reach an internal temperature of 160 degrees to be safe. You can insert a thermometer just like this one. Have you ever done this? No. You haven't? It's really important to make sure your meat is done well so you don't get sick. And just insert it into the center of the beef mixture to make and make sure it doesn't touch the bottom of the slow cooker. You don't want to jam it all the way through there because then you're not going to get an accurate reading. Now, lucky for us, we already have a recipe prepared and I am ready to try it. You want to see what it looks like? Yep. All right. When they're all done, this is what they'll look like. And they are just delicious. Are you ready to go try? Yeah. Okay. Canned foods do not always get the respect they deserved. Fresh and frozen are great, but canned is also nutritious, easy to store, and ready to go. Kids love tacos, and you can double the fiber and add other nutrients as well by adding a can of black beans to the beef mixture. Do you like tacos? Yeah. Yeah. Add canned beans to soups or salads for color, flavor, and nutrition. Canned beans are a must on your pantry shelf because they are so versatile. Favorite canned vegetables are corn and green beans. Are those your favorites? What are your favorite canned vegetables? Eh, corn. Corn? But there's a world of other veggies too. Tomatoes, pumpkin, and potatoes can all be bought in can. They are ready with just the turn of a can opener. Canned fruit packed in water or natural juices has half the calorie of fruit packed in heavy syrup. Can you tell the difference? Do you ever, what do you buy at home? The heavy syrup, do you know? Or we buy light. Yeah, and it tastes just as good, doesn't it? Yeah. Canned peaches, mandarin oranges, pineapple, and pears make a great salad or dessert. Watch for sales in grocery ads and buy a few extra cans to have on hand. And don't forget canned fish. Do you like tuna fish? 
Tuna and salmon are super convenient and a great way to add protein and omega-3 fats. Canned tuna packed in water has about half the calories of tuna packed in oil, so check the label before buying. Canned foods can make your job in the kitchen easier and your meals more nutritious too. This is one of my favorite dishes, Zach. Let's see if you like it as much as I do, okay? You ready to try it? For flavor variations, use canned or fresh tomatoes and add your favorite herb combinations. To bump up the veggie servings, add a can of drained whole kernel corn to the meat mixture, and that's a really good combination, too. What do you think? Pretty good. You like it? Can you taste the peppers in the flavoring? And you like it still? Good job. You'll have to try that pepper cooked and see if you like it, too. For more information about this recipe and helpful hints to make cooking easier, visit our website. We'll see you next time on Kids Are Cooking.